Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products and on today's video we're going to take some of these logs up to the sawmill, get them cut into slabs and beams. Well here's my pile and my plan was I was going to send all this stuff to the mill and just have it get cut up and paid for it. But I just, I think there's more value here in slabbing them up, cutting them into beams and, and boards and stuff. And so I want to experiment with that a little bit today. And I've got uh, spruce, I've got hemlock, and I've got some dug fir. And hemlock typically isn't worth very much. The dug fir is kind of a medium grade. The, the spruce is worth even less than the hemlock. But I'm hoping with some of my big, big logs like this one and that one, both spruce, that I can get these cut down to about eight or 10 foot lengths. We'll take them up to Fred, get them sawn up into, this one will be nice two, three, four inch slabs. And I think I can get a lot more value out of slabs out of this spruce than just sending it off to the mill. So I'm gonna get this thing bucked up into eight or 10 foot chunks. I'm gonna try and load it onto my flatbed here. I'll throw some of the longer pieces of dug fir and hemlock, and I'll take some cedar up as well on my trailer. But that log, I did the calculation, at 30 pounds a cubic foot, that thing weighs about uh, 2,000 pounds every eight feet. So I'm gonna try and get a couple of those logs on my flatbed, it's rated for it, I shouldn't have a problem, but we're gonna haul a big chunk of that log up and see how, uh, see how Fred does with it in the sawmill. Well, I've got two logs bucked at eight feet, and I've got them halfway through. I'm going to get my excavator over here, lift this thing out of the mud so I can buck them nice and, well, clean, as clean as I can get them. But I'm only going to take two spruce logs. I've, that, that's going to be lots and lots of spruce. And then uh, I'll get some other dug fir and hemlock and get them loaded up. I'm gonna try and buck off a piece of this hemlock. And as you can see, this thing's got a big old wow, big banana looking thing to it. <clears throat> and that makes a lot of stress in this wood. So it's gonna be really hard to get boards or beams or anything out of this because they're gonna to wanna to go wonky and twist the hearts. The heart on this thing is up here and look at how much wood you got. It's just all screwed up. The whole log's all screwed up. But what I wanna try is if you can orient it right and start slabbing this way, those slabs are gonna go with the banana, but it might have a really cool curved live edge look to it. So I'm gonna try one of these and maybe make two or three inch slabs out of it the long way and see, we'll see what happens.
Holy cow, look at those things on there. I got three of them. They're just inside the bed on both sides. So I'm legal. And I figured, I did the math, that one weighs about 1,800 pounds, that one weighs about 1,500 pounds, and that one weighs about 1,000. So I'm packing somewhere around 5,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds, somewhere in there. And the truck can do, uh, have a payload of about nine. So we're well within the truck's limit, but it's squatting a little bit. <laughs> All right, okay, what do we got? Got to find something to shove under there. Oh, it's a heavy son of a gun. He wants me to chip all that bark off of there. Can you believe it? Yeah, me either. Look at this stump. Look at that burly old thing. I want to see what that looks like when it's cut. All right, tell me about your saw here, Fred. It's a Forester model 7540D diesel, Kubota engine. Did you make this thing? Or is it kind of a kit job or what? I was inspired to do something, so that's what I did. Okay. And it'll cut, is that 75 inches across? 75 inches across. Wow. It's a huge slobbing machine. This is the motor of the whole thing right here. It's Kubota, you said? Kubota. 40 horsepower? 40 horsepower. And it runs on these big railroad track things you got here. Is that just old rail, railroad track? All right, YouTube, what do you think? Is this the biggest slobbing sawmill on YouTube? Has anyone seen a bigger one than this? Send me a link. Let me know. We could go up. Well, I finally conned Fred into cutting these spruce logs for me. And uh, he says, well, the first thing you got to do is get the bark off. I said, what? Bark? He says, yeah. Here, which one of these do you want? <laughs> so I grabbed them both. I <laughs> got them buried in the log and... Look at that, the handle on this one broke already. So I guess I'm using the axe instead of the brush hook. But we'll see how this uh, this debarking goes here. Okay, Fred, show me how to debark this thing. Well, if you don't know by now, you're a lot hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you did a good job here. There we go. Okay. Did what I could do. So we're just going to, you're just going to lay it on the mill like that and just start slabbing, slabbing down the top, right? Yep. And do you only need one side clean? <laughs> That's if you're lazy. <laughs> so I better get on the other side, huh? Oh, it's fine. And how thick do you, should we make them? Two and a half inch. And that'll give us some room to plane them down when they're. Dry? Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Okay. 
So this thing across is oh, upside down. Whatever it is, 37, 38 inches. This thing can cut 75 inch wide. 75. 75. It's the biggest sawmill on YouTube. Not quite. No? All right, first time I've ever used this one, so you're gonna have to tell me what to do. Stay in there. Okay, watch. You got it. It's got a cool little winch. Pull it back. It auto feeds forward.
Well, what do you think, Fred? Yep. <laughs> A man of many words. Is it good? It's good. What are they worth? More than firewood. <laughs> so, 100 bucks a piece? They're, they're roughly 24 to 30 inches, 8 feet long, 3 inches thick. Couple e email Jason and tell him you'll buy one for a hundred bucks. <laughs> we'll ship for free. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> These are still pretty wet, huh? Yep, you can feel it. Nice and damp. Year old. Yeah. So what, I gotta let them sit for a couple years? Or put them in your kiln? Air dry. Air dry? What's the rule of thumb for air drying? How long? How hot? How hot? I don't know, it's pretty hot right now. Don't want to put them in the sun. They'll lose 50% moisture probably in a month. In the sun? Not in the sun, in the wind. Oh, okay. So keep them out of the, keep them out of the sun, in the shade or covered, but sticker them, about an inch between them. Let the air blow through. Will they check and crack? No, except this one. That one there, or that one there. It's the center, the pit. The rest will stay. Okay. Looks like that scratch a little bit. Yeah. But it's not gonna split, you know, way up the slab or anything. No. So what do you do when they split? Do you just cut that part out and use the sides? People put butterflies in them, and epoxy. Oh yeah. Glue them back together, straight line them. So cut them in half. Cut them in half, or butterfly them or whatever. So now I've got all these slabs I gotta let dry for another year before I do anything with them. No, you're gonna sell them for a hundred dollars. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Sell them for a hundred bucks, get rid of them, flip them and Keep going, huh? Cut more. Well, there you go. Nice wood. He can't see his forks from where he's sitting. So he's kind of got to feel his way where he's going. All right guys, and here's our finished spruce slabs. They're all stickered up there, drying out. We'll make a couple tables here in a future video, hopefully. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.